Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please click on like and subscribe. If you've been here before, welcome back. I'm going to do a video on the Ring doorbell app or the Ring app. Uh, I haven't done one of these for uh, probably a year, year and a half now. They've come out with a lot of different updates. So I'm going to go over the new features on here as of June of 2023. Now I'm going to make this one big long video, but I'm going to section it out into a whole bunch of separate little videos. So some of these features you may or may not want or need or care about. And that's why I'm going to break it out into a bunch of little sections. But if you want to know just about everything there is to know about the app, watch the entire video. So we're going to go over the three icons on the top here, Disarmed, Home, and Away. These are three different settings you can put in your system. So basically you can have different features or different functions active at different times of the day or night. This is mostly used for alarm systems, not really used a lot for lighting and things like that. But you can set it up any way you want. So let's say I pick the Home key. When I pick the home key, you'll notice home mode activated and a bunch of things pop up on the screen. Basically, that just enabled all those devices to do different things that I've set them up to do in that mode. You can do the same thing with the away mode, or I'm going to go back to my disarm mode because it's normally where I keep my system at. It doesn't matter which mode you keep your system in, as long as you put the settings the way you want. Now, if you click on the top left icon, there's three little bars up there. Go down to settings. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see modes. Click on modes and this is where you'll see your disarmed, home, and away. So in each one of those you can go in and customize these depending on the devices you have, whether you've got door sensors, outdoor lighting, different cameras, and you can click on each one of those and tell it what you want it to do in that mode. Once you're done you hit the save button and then the next time you hit the home mode, the away button or the disarm button, that's what will happen in those. If you hit the back arrow until you get to the three bars again, hit the three bars, and go back to the dashboard it takes us back to our main menu so let's go over these icons down below it a little bit we've got lights on key delivery neighbors history water valve garage thermostat alarm locks chimes and edit so you can actually edit these bars to pop up different things so the first icon we're going to go over here on mine is the lights so in the lights i've actually got um, a spotlight camera and i can actually turn the lights on or off from here that's all that does that lets you turn on the lights on particular cameras so if you had a bunch of outdoor floodlights, spotlights, you could turn them on and off from here. The key delivery, like I said, that's through Amazon. So if you turn that on, you'll add the, the ship option, key ship option. And again, Amazon will actually be able, or the UPS driver will be able to open your garage door and get in your house uh, using your garage door app. The neighborhood, or neighbors, that's the neighborhood watch uh, group. Basically, anything goes on in your neighborhood, you can sign up for that. And if there's you know someone breaking in cars or something, you can get notifications for that. History is pretty obvious. That tells you what's happened in the area. Water valves, you can get um, like Z-Wave control water valves, um, Wi-Fi water control valves. You just have to make sure they're compatible with the ring. And you can actually turn your water on and off. Let's say you're going out of town, you want to turn the water off, or someone calls and says you've got a water leak somewhere, you can remotely turn it on and off. Most of these do have leak detection on them. So it'll actually tell, if you tell it you're in away mode and that valve is set to go, if for some reason water starts trickling through there in the away mode, it'll shut your water off for you automatically. Uh, garage. So I've got my queue. So in here on your app, I've already got mine set up. Yours would actually say like connect to my queue. And basically you enter your my queue account and it will come up with your garage door opener. So I can actually open and close my garage door with my app here. And again, this will go in here. You can set up the key delivery in here. Same thing so Amazon can get into your house and you can change the uh, device name if you wanted to. Next one over, thermostats. Um, Honeywell and Nest, I believe, both incorporated in here. Honeywell um, is actually probably the more common one. Uh, if I had to choose one, it seems to be the most accurate one to work with this. I do not have a Honeywell Wi-Fi thermostat. But basically, you would create a Honeywell Home account for your thermostat and you would incorporate it the same way you did the MyQ. Once you set up your Honeywell account, you come in here, you log in with your Ring app and then your thermostats will show up in here also. The alarm, again, that's an alarm system you can get from Ring now. I believe it's $100 a year. You've got to buy the base station, keypads, door sensors, and you can set up your own alarm system if you wanted to. And Ring does monitor the alarm system and you can give them access to your cameras. So for some reason the alarm goes off they would be able to actually see what's going on inside and outside your house depending on where your cameras are. Again, uh, 
kind of a toss-up question on that whether you want people to actually see in and out of your house but um it's 2023 people are probably looking in and out of your house to be honest with you anyhow whether you want them to or not um door locks same thing you can add z-wave door locks to this if you want i believe um august locks or wi-fi locks i think ring or amazon has bought august locks now so i think you can integrate the locks with it same thing you would go into here you can shop for locks it's going to take you to amazon to buy locks that are compatible and you can tie in certain door locks schlag i believe works with it also um, so if you set, set up a wi-fi schlag lock again same thing you would log into your schlag account and then you can control your door locks for this also uh, chimes or additional chime modules you can get so for some reason you can't hear the doorbell or you don't have a physical doorbell in the house you can add these or let's say you want to put one on the back porch because you hang out out back all the time somebody rings the doorbell this will actually ring on the back of, of the house or wherever you plug it in at uh, these also will increase the signal of the ring if you buy the ring pro i've got a video on the ring chime pro versus the ring chime but basically it will increase the wi-fi compatibility for your ring devices it will not increase your regular wi-fi access points for your house or your computers but it will boost the wi-fi signal to your ring so for some reason you've got you you are just got a weak signal when you try to plug this in you can actually plug in multiple chime modules and make them work so the last thing over here is edit if you click on this this is the shortcuts this is all the links i had at the top there now i had all mine enabled just so you could see what each one of them do if you don't want these on here all you have to do is drag like if i don't want the locks I can click on it and drag it down to there and it will take it off the list. If I want to put it back on, these are the hidden shortcuts, I would drag it and put it back up top. And I'm doing that by clicking those two little bars to the right. And you can put them in whatever order you want also. So if you want the, um, uh, the neighbors on there first, you can click on that, drag it up, and that's the order the icons will be in when you go back across here. I dropped it in the wrong spot, but you see what I was doing. So you arrange these based on however often you're going to use them or what you're going to use most of all. So if you want the garage door to be first, edit. We would go to garage down here, grab the two little bars on the side, and just go all the way to the top. Drop it where you want it. And then when you go back to your shortcuts, now your garage is opened on the left-hand side first, or your garage icons on the left-hand side. So now let's go over the little icon at the top right, the shopping cart basically this is where you can go buy stuff on amazon the icon right beside it with the little moon on it and the three bars if you click on it that's a snooze for all cameras so let's say for instance you got landscapers out there somebody's out there mowing the grass or you're having a party and people are out back moving around a lot you can put every camera in snooze mode for two four six eight twelve hours and that way you don't get the ring notifications on your phone so your phone's not blowing up in your pocket and you already know there's people in the backyard or wherever they're at so let's go over to the top left. Now there's a bunch of different settings in here. I'll go over most of the items with you. I might not go into each one with detail, but we'll go over most of them just to let you know what each one of them does and if it's important to you or not. So we're going to click the three bars at the top left. Dashboard, of course, is your home page. Neighbors is what I was telling you where basically you can find out whether there's cats missing in your area or cars that were broken into the night before. Devices, this is where you would go to add new devices or set up devices. Or it would tell you if like you've got a camera offline or something like that you could go in there and fix the wi-fi if it's offline or you can go into individual settings on the cameras i'll show you how to do those on a different video but right now that's what that icon there is for key delivery again this is back to amazon key delivery this lets amazon open and close your garage door for you so if you've got a package you don't want left outside you set up this key delivery You'll get notifications on your phone, but they will open your garage door, put your package in your garage, and then shut your garage for you. Uh, next icon down is the history, and that's basically just what's happened where and what time it happened. So you can actually see what, you can go back and play the video back if you want to on each one of those. Um, shows you the events, like if you have an alarm system, you can turn these on, you could filter them out. Let's say you only want to see motion happen, or if you wanted to see a key delivery, someone delivered the package. Uh, basically, you can set this up for whatever you want or sort it however you want to. So the settings icon is going to have a bunch of stuff in it. When you click on the settings button, you'll see name, address, modes, geofence, shortcut, shared access, neighborhood settings, and delete location. So obviously it's got your address at the top here because that's what you set it up as. If you want to change your address, you can click on the address button 
and you can change that. Modes is for your stay away or your disarmed home and away buttons. Uh, again, that's mostly for alarm systems, but I did the other video showing you how to do that. Um, or it's earlier on this video, depending on if you're watching the short version or long version. Uh, geofence. Now what a geofence does is it creates a barrier around your house. So you can have it set up so if somebody walks in the area or walks out of the area with their phone. So let's say you've got your phone with you. You walk away from that little circle area as you can see the animation showing you. It'll come up and tell you, hey, you just left your house and you didn't disarm your alarm. Do you want to disarm it? Or you can have it set so when you come home, it'll pop up and say, it looks like you're home. Do you want to turn off the alarm? Again, this feature is more for the alarm system than it is anything else. But it'll also let you know if you've left the house and left something open or closed. Geofence is up to you whether you want to turn it on or not. To me, I found it more annoying than anything. Shortcuts. Again, we covered this on the other video um, or earlier in this video. This is on the top bar on your dashboard, the little icons that showed up in the order they were in. So you can rearrange them in here also. Shared access. This is if you want to give somebody access to your um, camera system for whatever reason. Let's say you've got, um, you're going out of town or you want your mom and dad to be able to see the cameras or you want to be able to see your mom and dad's house, something like that, and they want to give you access to it. You would go in here and you would share it with an invited person. Um, and that would give them access to your cameras. You can go back in here and take them out. Um, if you're boyfriend girlfriend situation or live in relationship and you're not married, don't plan on being married forever, something like that. Another good reason to use this because if you split up, separate, divorce, um, someone's got access to your cameras that you may not want to have. So I would always create a master account and share access with everybody. Uh, neighbor settings, that's basically um, the neighborhood watch we looked at earlier. Uh, this is so you can set up what you want to see, whether you want to see pet features, new features, neighborhood deals, uh, people do shopping, help center, all kinds of stuff on there. And of course you got delete location, which would delete your camera system and everything in it. Set up a device, uh, pretty obvious. If you are if you bought a new Ring device, you're going to click on here and basically pick whatever you picked, whether it's a smart car or mailbox sensor, um, a thermostat, water valve, whatever you picked. You go in here and you follow directions to set up your new device. So on down we have account settings. When we click on that, that's your email address, first and last name, your email, your phone number, basically password, whether you want the two-step verification every time you log in and out. And if you've linked your Amazon account, your MyQ account, or your Honeywell account, all that shows up down here so you can unlink them at any time you wanted to. Uh, control Center. When we click on the Control Center, basically this looks almost like everything else we've just looked at. Uh, account management, um, account verification, authorized client details, Amazon linking, shared users it's what's new basically what's new it's an advertisement form to tell you what's new uh, shopping deals obviously they're trying to sell you stuff the display this will let you set your display to always light always dark extra dark um, basically just your personal um, viewing invite your neighbors that would be like if your neighbor has a ring account um, you could invite them to see your cameras if you wanted to you could pick certain cameras you want them to see and you would also share the notifications for them also. Uh, help, obviously you click on help, it takes you to the help menu and you can contact support, visit the library or get spare parts for your ring devices. So we're back to the dashboard again. Next thing are our cameras. So we've got this little square box here. It looks like four little squares. If you click on that, it just shows the different layouts for your cameras. So you can either do single individual cameras down through there or you can do small blocks of four. If you're using an iPhone or something like that, most likely you want to keep it on single individual cameras because if not, you're not going to be able to see anything. Now I've got three different types of cameras hooked to mine, so I'm going to show you settings in each one. Um, most of the settings are, are the same except for on the battery power cameras. They're a little bit different. Uh, so on our front doorbell, our video doorbell cameras look a little bit different. Now Ring makes 10 different video doorbell cameras probably at least, so your menu may vary a little bit, but it should be similar. Uh, for instance, if you've got a battery-powered doorbell, some of the features aren't available. The battery doorbell bells, the battery, the battery-powered doorbells do not let you do live view, or they'll only record every so often. That's to keep you from draining your battery. If it recorded all the time, like the powered cameras do, 
your batteries would be dead every other day and you'd have to charge them. So some of the features aren't available on the battery power cameras that are on the power cameras. So we're going to click on the settings gear by the front door. So once you get this open, you'll see ring alerts, motion detection, motion alerts, motion warning. So first thing on the top are ring alerts. And that's if somebody actually physically presses the doorbell, pushes the button, and it rings the doorbell. It's going to come up on your phone and tell you somebody is at your front door. Or somebody's ringing your front doorbell. Or somebody's at the door, depending on what you set up in here later. And I'll show you how to change all that. The motion detection is basically so it will record anything that moves. If you turn the motion detection off, it doesn't record anything that happens outside. So do not turn the motion detection off. The only time it would record is if you had the ring alerts on. The motion alerts are what sends your notification to your phone saying there's something in your front yard, or there's somebody in your front yard, backyard, whatever. So you can turn that off if you want to. Like let's say it's in a populated area or on the side of your house and you don't want to get notifications all the time because there's a dog or something out there, you can turn that off. Or you can hit snooze if something's in the yard. The motion warnings where the camera itself will come up and tell somebody uh, you're being recorded, um, leave now. That's the newest feature that you see on TV, uh, fancy schmancy stuff. So a couple of these I'm not going to click on, but we'll, we'll go over them anyhow. Event history, that's basically everything that's happened in that camera that it's recorded. Accessories, when you click on that, that's going to come up with ring chimes, um, level locks, ring chime pro. It's basically going to try to sell you a bunch of stuff that you may or may not want. The mode settings, this is back to our home, stay away. We covered this in another video, so you can tell it whether what you want to do in each one of these settings. So if you go into disarm mode, this is what's going to happen when you when your system's in disarm mode. Uh, and you can turn on and off different features of depending on whether it's a camera or a sensor or a motion camera or battery camera, you'll have different icons in here you can either turn on or off. Link devices. When you go into link devices, you can actually link more than one device. So let's say for instance You've got a camera on the front of your house. You've got a front door camera. You can actually have the front door camera turn on. And when the front door camera picks something up, it can turn on the garage camera also. So you can have it turn on different cameras around the house. So they're already recording. If something passes from one camera to the next camera, you can catch the, the, the whatever's going on with it. You can also get an alarm sent to you. And it'll pop up and it'll tell you that something's happened. Or you can turn the lights on when something's triggered. So let's say, for instance, you went to the uh, someone came by the uh, front door, because that's what we're in right now. You can have the garage record the event, and then we can actually turn on lighting. So if you've got lights outside the house, uh, spotlights, floodlights, things like that, you can actually pop the lighting on if you wanted to. So I'll turn that back off because I don't want to save that in mine. And when you get done, you hit the save icon at the top. Rings, if somebody rings the doorbell, same thing. If somebody actually physically pushes the button on the doorbell, you can set the other cameras up to record or alert you, which we've already done on the other menu. Motion snooze, when we click on that, that takes you into snooze that one camera. So on the front page, we had the little icon at the top that snoozed all the cameras. This will just snooze that one particular camera for however long you pick. Link chimes, these are the chimes, the chime pros. Um, I don't have any chimes actually hooked to mine right now. But basically, you can add the chime modules, which I went over earlier, that will extend the range of your ring doorbell or ring cameras, and it will ring in different rooms of your house, so you can hear it ringing if for some reason you can't hear it, or if you want it in a workshop or a shed or out back, you can add chimes to it. Device health. This will tell you whether your signal strength is good. Um, if you put, let's say you, you changed your router, you can change your Wi-Fi network in here, you can name your product. Test the Wi-Fi, troubleshoot notifications. Um, you can check the status of the ring system, uh, device health report. Um, and if you have a battery power camera, it would actually show your battery in here and it would tell you, like my transformer voltage is good. If it was a battery, it would tell you um, battery is low or battery is at 50%. Some devices like the stick up cam or not the stick up cameras, the um, uh, spotlight cameras have like two batteries in it. So it would show you both batteries health. motion settings when we go in here now again this is something that will change depending on the camera you have the make the model the year everything around it this is basically so you can create zones around your house so certain things that move 
will or will not trigger the alarms. So when I click on this, this is going to pull up a big menu. You can see where I've got all the blue lines out around here. That's areas I don't want motion to pick up. So that tree up in the top right hand corner, when the wind blows that tree, it doesn't make my alarm sound. It doesn't give me a notification. I've got my driveway there, so when someone pulls in the driveway, it'll send me a notification. But I've got the neighbor's driveway bar marked off, so when they come home, it doesn't notify me. Anything goes into that blue area, I get a notification or it starts recording. And again, some of these are a little bit less, um, uh, they, they don't have as many features. You can't drag as many places. You've got to create squares in there instead of being able to add drag and drop uh, on some of the older cameras. Now, something else you can do is you can create another zone. So let's say, for instance, um, you could um, block the tree out up on the top right and then block a bush out on the bottom left and leave everything else blue. So if for some reason you've got a bunch of landscaping pieces but you still want to record all the area, you can just block out individual trees and bushes that way by creating more camera motion zones, which is right there. You would just add a zone and create more zones. Sensitivity, you can minimum, maximum. Basically, the bigger the object, um, the less sensitivity it needs to trigger it. So you can adjust the sensitivity there. If you get, you know, if you, you're in a squirrel zone uh, or a cat zone or something like that, you don't want the thing going off all night recording cats and squirrels. So you can set it to more, uh, less sensitive so it doesn't pick that up. It only picks up people, cars, things like that. Smart alerts, um, basically uh, get emotion alerts and recordings um, or neither. So basically if it thinks there's a person out there, it can send you an alert. If it's other motions that it doesn't think is a person, you can turn that on too. Uh, if someone records a, or drops a package, it can pick up the UPS guy now. And I think they're starting to add facial recognition and clothing recognition into these. So it'll be able to tell whether they're wearing a blue outfit or brown outfit. And eventually we'll be able to tell you whether it's UPS, FedEx or anything like that at your door. Advanced settings. This is basically so you can set schedule. So basically during certain times of the days, it will and will not record. So if you don't want to get motion alerts throughout the day, you could set it every day between 9 and 10 o'clock. Don't send me alerts. Or if you don't want alerts in the middle of the night, you could turn off the alerts in the middle of the night. So device settings. In here, it's going to have some of the features that we saw in other places. Um, so I'm not going to go over them too in uh, depth, but basically you got video settings. When you click on that, you can do the color night vision, uh, which and it gives you better viewing in low light situations. Uh, you don't want green people at your door, so I usually leave the color night vision on. The tap camera for preview live, leave that on so you can see live events as they happen. And the video recording length, again, depending on your um, your internet speed and your camera, I usually leave that to auto, but you can adjust that to 60 seconds if you want it, or 30 seconds if you only want to record smaller amounts. Snapshot capture. This captures images whether it's recording or not. So let's say there's no motion happening in the yard. You can set this so every one minute, every 30 seconds, or every three minutes, it just takes a snapshot. So even though nothing's happening, when you go to your playback mode and you start skimming through, it'll take a picture every minute or every 30 seconds without recording the video. So it's just on still images. So for some reason, there's something off the camera just far enough, or let's say someone's at your neighbor's house, but you have the motion not to set, you still may be able to capture an image of something happening that's not in your motion zone or somewhere else on the camera that's not close enough to trigger your camera to motion. Notification settings. Rich notifications. When you click on this, basically, when it sends you the notification on the phone, it's going to send you a picture. So you won't just get, you know, someone's at your front door. You're going to get someone's at your front door with a picture of them in there. So it basically just shows you a small image of what's going on. I've got that enabled. It comes in handy because when you get a motion alert, you don't have to take the time to open the camera, all that. You can just look on the alert and see what it was. The app alert tones. So tones on here, you can change each one of these. And again, we're still in the front door here. You can change it to do all these different things. So if you want your doorbell to sound like a cowbell, you can pick cowbell. You can pick uh, where it says someone's at the front door. You can say uh, someone at Doorbell Pro. Basically, you can pick it to the dogs bark on your phone. These are just app alerts. Like if you're getting a text message, this is the sound your phone's going to make when you pick one of them. So if you click the cowbell or something like that, you're going to get cowbell. If you click motion alerts, same thing. Uh, instead of someone actually being at the door ringing the bell, what you're going to get is one of these pop up on your phone. So I don't want cowbell, I want someone's on my front door. 
And then my phone will actually say, someone's at your front door. Link chimes, we're back to the chime modules again. If you have a chime module hooked up, you can set the chime module to do different things too. So you can actually set the chime to do a Westminster chime, happy birthday, whatever you want to play. Help and content, um, we went over that on a different page. Basically, it takes you to Ring's website for help. It takes you to their vlog. Shared access, shared access is where you can invite other people to hear. We covered that also. Basically, if you want to add friends, neighbor, relative, spouse, whatever, this is the menu we go in to add them as a user. Click on that and add their email account and then they can have access to your cameras. So I'm gonna pick a stick up camera this time. So this is a ring stick up camera and it shows you a picture of it in the top corner. You notice I don't have the ring alert on here because you can't ring the bell. I've got motion detection, motion alerts, motion warning, same thing uh, as before. The motion detection records anything when there's motion. The motion alerts will actually send you an alert on your phone since I work in my garage all the time, even though it says kitchen. Every time I walk through the garage, my phone will alert me and let me know something's moving in there. Uh, you'll notice this one actually has a siren button on it. So you can hit the siren, you can actually set off a siren on that little thing. It makes a little bit of noise. Uh, probably not enough to scare anybody away, but at least they would know that you know that they're in the house. So most of your other cameras beside your doorbell will have a siren alert on them. So down at the bottom you'll see there's still all the icons. So at the bottom you'll see there's still the same uh, icons that were on the other camera. Uh, same features are inside there. Again, some things are a little bit different, but basically if you watch the other part of the video, you'll know you'll be able to walk yourself through that. All right, so I'm gonna click on this middle camera here. This is a spotlight camera. So basically, this is a battery powered camera. When I click on it, it shows you a picture of the camera we're working on. Uh, I've got this set up in the garage basically so we can go over the settings with you. If you look at the top right, this camera has two batteries in it. One's red, one's green. So pretty much I've drained one of the batteries on this camera already. Um, the other battery still looks like it's fully charged. I'll show you how to check that in a minute. You've got a lights icon on here, so you can actually turn the lights on this. So if it's in your backyard and you use it for a floodlight or a spotlight, you can click on that and actually light up the yard. Uh, the motion detection, this is the same as the other cameras. Uh, picks up motion, starts recording. The motion alerts will send you an alert on your phone or mobile device. And the motion warning will tell people, hey, get out of my yard. Um, you're being recorded on camera. Siren sets off the siren on it. Uh, same thing on here with the other one. The event history is the same. The accessory is the same. Mode settings are the same, device schedules are the same, link device is the same, motion snooze same. When you click on the device health, this will actually show you the battery power. Like the other one just showed you the um, uh, transform was in good shape. This actually shows you my left battery is at 28%, my right battery is 100%. I've got a solar panel on this one, so it shows it's connected and it's green, so it's working properly. Shows you your signal strength, which is green, which is good. If it's yellow or red, you need to move your uh, router or you need to get a Ring Pro to boost your signal, change your network if you change the um, Wi-Fi in your house. Power settings. On the battery power cameras, you can do the capture snapshot. And again, this is the same as the other one. So again, your, your battery power camera is going to record less to save energy for the camera. If it records all the time, it's not gonna be a good thing. So. If you pick this to record every five minutes, it's gonna take a snapshot every five minutes, it's gonna suck down your battery. So most likely you wanna keep it on every hour unless you've got a good solar panel and it's, let's say, um, summertime, you're less likely for anything to happen at five o'clock in the morning. If the battery dies overnight, it'll still be recording through most of the night. It may die by morning if you only have one battery in there. So motion frequency, when we click on that, you can have it check for motion and it takes breaks in between. Now again, this is not really made for recording full time. A powered camera is always recommended for recording all the time, but these are good in a pinch. Again, the more frequently it checks for motion, the more likely you are going to burn the battery up. Now again, I've got a solar panel, two batteries on mine, so I'm not too worried about killing the batteries. If you did not have the solar panel and you had to charge that battery all the time, uh, you're most likely going to put it on periodically and leave it on the one hour setting. The advanced motion detection, um, same thing here. You can set up the little perimeters around there, um, same as we showed you on the, the video doorbell pro. I'm not going to go over that again. But basically, you can enter, you can introduce the zones to it. And the recording length, same thing. Um, you can record for 60 seconds, 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 120 seconds. That's how long it'll record after it starts, after it's been triggered. So the more it's recording, the, again, the shorter your battery life's going to be. 
<clears throat> if you want an extra battery, click on that and they'll sell you a new battery. Shared access and help content, obvious. Shared access is back to if you want to share your device with somebody else. We'll go back to the main page now. And that's the Ring app pretty much in a nutshell. There are a couple little smaller features on here. There are different features if you have an alarm system. But for the basic system for cameras, uh, that should cover just about everything you need to know about it. Sorry it was long-winded. It's hard to cover all that information. Tried to talk fast enough to get everyone through the whole video without clicking off of it. Tried to talk slow enough that you could understand me so that people wouldn't click off of it. Uh, it's a really tough thing to do. It was a long video like that with a lot of information on it. And again, I'm going to try to break this out into separate little videos, so hopefully you watch the video. Um, please click on like and subscribe, and if you have comments or questions, please leave them below.